At the end of the day, we all know what the situation is with us burning huge amounts of fossil fuels and it would be very good if we could reduce that. If you can produce a non-polluting system that's cheaper than a polluting system, it's an absolute no-brainer. For the last 15 years I've been involved in consenting and the construction of onshore wind in Scotland. I drive around Scotland and look at some of the wind farms I've been involved in and feel a real glow of pride uh, at what I see before me. I'm delighted that I'm able to continue my involvement in renewables through the opportunity that KPS brings. I've joined KPS as a chief executive to offer leadership within the organisation but also to engage with stakeholders and future customers and get them as excited about the project as we are in the team. In early 2017, we moved from Essex up to Glasgow. We have the head office in the middle of Glasgow where all the administration and the engineering is done. We've got a small workshop downstairs where we do the prototyping and then the test site is down in Westbrook in the southwest of Scotland. We moved to Scotland because the best test site we could find was in Scotland. Since we've moved here though, the secondary benefits have been very good. The support from the Scottish Government and from Scottish Enterprise has been outstanding. Glasgow is a great place to recruit engineering talent. We've recruited significantly, so we're now three times the, the size of the team than we were before. The fundamental shifts in the technology since we moved up from Essex is we've built a much bigger unit. I mean, it's a 500 kilowatt unit, so it's quite a step up. We have four key investors. We have Schlumberger, the E.ON, and we have Shell Technology Ventures. We also have Scottish Enterprise, who came in with a, a gap funding. Our intention with the existing funding is to complete our prototype base unit, commission it, deploy it to our flying site, and marry it up with one of the new style of wings, and have all of that operating with control flight by the end of 2019. We then are looking to identify a site where we can put an array with at least three units on it. So this is basically the, it's like a mini array that you would see when these things are properly deployed. That's to demonstrate all of the other parts, you know, the fixing to the ground, the distribution of the power away from the unit, putting it into the grid. Those will deploy in 2021 uh, and will be operational for at least two years. And then we expect first customers taking deliveries in 2023. Our technology is designed to be very light. So by using a lot less material in the build, it means that we can produce the energy for less money. We expect to be around three quarters of, of the costs over the life cycle of the product and the mature technologies. A 500 kilowatt product can be deployed anywhere in the world very quickly because it's a standard ISO container size. That means that it can be put on the back of a lorry and moved in very short order at very low cost wind turbines have very large blades which have to be delivered as a single unit. There are parts of the globe where the road infrastructure simply doesn't allow that to happen. Kites can operate in areas that conventional mature renewable technologies can't and indeed they can operate in, in areas where they can and supplement them so one can get more energy out of the same site. Since 2011 my vision hasn't changed. This technology when scaled up has the ability to become a very very significant part of the global energy mix. Kites are a really serious contender now. Uh, the difference between now and then when we first started is a completely different story. Bringing out a 500 kilowatt device is just the very beginning of the journey.